Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Dr. Craig Casper with NYHD and the Institute for Hearing and Balance based in New York. We're back today on this beautiful day with another episode of the Audiologist at Home episodes. And there's Dr. Zweig. What's up, Dr. Zweig? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you today? Very well. Awesome. The plant is back. The sunshine is back. Yes, the plant is back and it's making a double appearance today. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, it's good to see you again. And um, we've got some some questions to answer today. Um, and this is actually a timely one also. What we're trying to do is we're trying to answer questions that are relevant, not only to our patients who have hearing loss, but also to the times, the things that we're dealing with. Uh, a lot of us, unfortunately, have been experiencing, hopefully not ourselves, but some people that we know have been getting sick, not only with COVID, but clearly the flu is something that's always around. And there's other illnesses that just pop out uh, throughout the course of our lives. And what we're here to talk to you about today is certain medications that might actually cause hearing loss, because a lot of people don't think about that necessarily, but there are a lot of medications that have the potential to cause either a temporary or even a permanent hearing loss. So why don't we talk a little bit about that? What do you know? What do I know? Okay. Uh, before I get into this discussion, though, I do want to say that I'm not telling anyone to discontinue any medications that were prescribed by their physician. I think that's important to note. A of lot of the medications I'll discuss are life-saving and are necessary. So just a, a disclosure. Very important point there. Yeah. Yeah. So there are over 200 medications that can impact the ear. Uh, medications that cause damage to the ear or, or specifically the inner ear, we refer to as ototoxic medications. And these are medications that are going to damage the sensory cells in the inner ear, resulting in hearing loss, potentially ringing in the ear, as well as some balance disorders. For the purpose of today, I'm going to focus a little bit more just on the hearing loss, which will also result in ringing in the ear at times. So I'm going to break this down into five classes of drugs. So we're going to talk about five different classes that could potentially impact, cause, or contribute to hearing loss. The first class of drug I'm going to discuss is called uh, antibiotic. So there are many types of antibiotics, but the specific antibiotics that tend to, or research shows, does have an impact on the structures of the inner ear are aminoglycosides. Aminoglycosides are drugs that generally have the suffix mycin. So for example, streptomycin, uh, gentamicin, neomycin, etc. cetera. Uh, and these drugs from research have shown to impact the small structure called the cochlea in the inner ear and result in some degree of hearing loss. The second class of drug is chemotherapy drugs, uh, which specifically are platinum-based drugs. One that we see more commonly in audiology is patients that are taking cisplatin because there's a lot of research to show that cisplatin is one drug that can cause hearing loss very quickly uh, when a patient starts to use that. Chemotherapy drugs like cisplatin are treating bladder cancers, ovarian cancers, testicular, sometimes head and neck cancers, as well as some breast cancers. With these patients, we're usually monitoring their hearing every month to three months, depending on the dosage and how frequently they are getting treated. The third class, pain relievers, probably more common amongst uh, most people, over-the-counter pain relievers, such as aspirins or acetaminophens. Aspirins, example, is a, a Bayer aspirin. Acetaminophen is like a, a Tylenol. Research shows that this could contribute to hearing loss, though it's generally after prolonged use or high dosage. Uh, so uh, I, I've read a research article that said if you're taking eight aspirins a day, that can contribute to hearing loss. So it's a lot of aspirin, yeah. That is a lot of aspirin, yes. Uh, the fourth class is diuretics. Diuretics are used to reduce the amount of fluid in the body. So they're prescribed generally to treat high blood pressure, edema, which is excess, excess uh, swelling in the body, usually the feet or the hands, or glaucoma, which is an eye disorder. There is not too much research to show or, or the reasons as to why they might cause some hearing loss, but there's a structure in the inner ear called the striovascular, which um, uh, impacts the fluid in the inner ear, so they relate that to uh, impacting that specific structure and as a result causing some hearing loss. And the fifth class is probably the most relevant medication today, which is the quinine drugs. And I say that because they're 
Uh, quinine drugs are used as an anti-malaria medication. And we have seen some, some articles recently and as well in the news that uh, hospitals, only hospitals, are using a synthetic form of quinine drugs called hydri, uh, hydroxychloroquine, which is used to treat COVID-19 patients. Generally, quinine drugs need to be um, to impact the inner ear are in high doses and for a longer period of time. We are not seeing that they're using that in the hospitals for COVID. It's usually a short term and emergency only, but it's going to be interesting to see if it has any impact on hearing. Yeah, no doubt. You know, it's really interesting because the things that that you talked about, the majority of the drugs that you talked about, and the disclaimer at the beginning is really important because a lot of these drugs we cannot discontinue because they're prescribed by our physicians for a variety of reasons, um, especially clearly the cancer drugs or the uh, the um, the water pills, let's say, right? The, the th things like Lasix, et cetera, those things can actually uh, cause some hearing loss as well. Um, so we don't have much control over that. And oftentimes what docs are looking at is the hearing loss is not the most important thing, unfortunately, right? It's they're trying to treat something that potentially is life threatening. So it's kind of a hierarchy of, of needs at that point. But what's really interesting is the things that you talk about, specifically the over the counter pain medications. That's something that most of us do have some control over. Now, I'm not talking about chronic pain. I'm not talking about when we're taking pain medication at the direction of our our physicians, but there are some studies, and there was one out of Harvard a few years ago that talks just about that is certain um, significant uses, and there's dose, it's dose dependent of some of these over the counter pain medications. Pay, pain medications can actually cause significant hearing loss. So, if we think about uh, women during their monthly cycles and the amount of pain medication we might be taking then, or someone who has chronic back pain, or whatever it might be, uh, these are things to definitely keep in mind. Um, mm -hmm. And some of the things you talked about before, tinnitus being a potential subtle sign that we might be creating some uh, damage to our hearing structures. Yeah. Um, really curious to see about these quinine drugs and particularly the drugs that they're trying on COVID. Um, really be interesting to see the longer term studies on hearing. Again, not the priority in the equation right now, yeah. but it's really important for us to know that as well. So awesome. Great information as usual, Dr. Zweig. My pleasure. All right. And if you guys have questions out there, you can send them to us at info at newyorkhearingdoctors.com, info at newyorkhearingdoctors.com. And we will be here. And uh, as we said yesterday in our video, we're really looking forward to getting back into our office. And uh, we're making uh, strides right now and taking steps in terms of how to do that safely for not only us, but also for every patient who walks in the door. And I think that in the upcoming week or so, we're going to be doing a video uh, that uh, Dr. Zweig, Dr. Naimi, and myself will be talking about all of the plans that are in place to make sure that uh, patients are kept safe. So again, thanks, Dr. Zweig. We'll talk to you soon. See you soon. Take okay. care. Take care.